When I discussed countdown timers, I focused heavily on the cosmetic approach, how to make them look cool. But in this video, we're gonna take it to the next level because what I'm gonna teach you is a sort of global perspective on how to move sources when your timer reaches a specific point, okay? This is gonna be a global approach so that you can understand it and apply it to your own specific need for your live stream. I promise to make more videos on this because this is absolutely epic. It is powerful and every OBS user should understand how to do what I'm about to explain. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live streaming. If this is the first time to the channel, I welcome you. I am all about OBS Studio at this channel. We're looking and trying to find all the wicked cool stuff that you can do with the software. It's almost unlimited what you can do with it. I'm being introduced to new pieces of software that are being developed for the program. OBS is starting to take off in a big way. There's so much energy behind it. So if you wanna be made aware of what's happening with the software, cutting edge stuff, subscribe and click the bell so that you can take your live stream to the next level. Yes. We're gonna be working with Move Transition. You can find it here, link in the description, and the Advanced Teen Switcher, link in the description. I wanna let you know that these are both compatible for Macintosh, but I will be explaining this tutorial using a PC, okay? Okay, in this demonstration, we're gonna have three scenes, each with its own countdown time period. The first scene will have a five second countdown. When it reaches zero, it goes to the next scene. We'll see the words rest. It will then count down from three to zero. When it gets to zero again, it goes to the next scene and we're going to animate the word go and it's gonna count down from five to zero again. All powered by the scene switcher and the move transition plugin. Here's the demo. So when a viewer sees that demonstration, they're assuming that it's just one scene, but you know it's three, and what makes the scene sort of seamless between each one is the usage of the same background image and the music is in each one of the scenes. So as far as they can tell, it's one actual scene, but it's not. This is what makes it so wicked cool. Okay, here I am in OBS Studio. And the first thing I did was to create a scene transition using the Move Transition plugin. I did that by going to this pull down here and it has a double function. One is to select an existing transition. One is to create a new one. So what I did was I clicked Add Move and basically created a, a transition using the Move Transition plugin, right? I called it Move 2. Here's what it looks like when I go into the properties. I checked off all these boxes and as I scroll down here, I selected what would happen with easing and transition type and everything. With matching items, appearing items would ease in and out with quadratic using a zoom animation from the center using a fade transition. So I did that for appearing and I did that for disappearing items, okay? And if you'd like a little bit more detail on how to work this, you can click this right here this is another video that has much more detail on how to manipulate these parameters. So check that video out if you want more clarity. So upon doing that and setting that all up, I had this transition, of course, named Move 2. Okay, so then I went into my scenes and I built the scene. So for the first countdown scene, I have, of course, the background animation source, which is the asteroids. I have this five second countdown and the song called Huggy Bear. So if you go into this countdown animation, if I double click it and go to properties, I just clicked restart playback when source becomes active. Okay, everything else was not checked. Hit okay. Scene two is the same thing, except there's some text called rest inside of there. Okay, so everything else is the same with the exception of a three second animated countdown, which is in there as a source. And then for the third source, I have let's go added to it with the five second countdown added as well, the Huggy Bear song and the background animation. Now, the only thing that I did differently is add a audio move transition to the text. And the way I applied that was right clicking on the song, selecting filters and adding a audio move filter, which is also available through the move transition. So actually the move transition has like such a wide expanse of capability 
And the audio move filter is just one of those examples. So I selected audio move and went through all these parameters, selecting the meter type of magnitude, the action is transform. I selected the scene of countdown three, which contains the let's go text, selected the let's go text in the source. The transform is scale. Okay. And the base value is 1.50 with a factor of 0.99. And if you want to see a little bit more detail on how I set that kind of thing up, check out this video right here and it'll give you a ton more of detail. Check that out. Okay. So now that you understand how everything was put together, I want to go over to the advanced scene switcher and let you know how I approached switching the scenes automatically. Okay. Assuming that you install the advanced scene switcher properly, when you go into tools, you'll see the advanced scene switcher selection. So select that and you'll get presented with this thing. And you're like, whoa, this is kind of complex. But honestly, when you break it down, it's really not bad. The first thing that I want you to do is go into the transition tab here and make sure that both the set transition overrides and the change active transition types are, set, are checked off, okay? Because we want this thing to power what gets selected in regards to your scene transitions. It's gonna make the decision for you. And that's why we check those off. The second thing I want you to do is go into the sequence tab and this is where you tell the advanced scene switcher to advance from one scene to the next based on time. It's really easy, check it out. You hit the plus sign and it gives you the selections. It says when and then select scene. So I'm gonna select when countdown 1A is active, switch to two after a set amount of time. Now I know that the countdown 1A has a five second countdown, it's animated. So I'm going to select five seconds, one, two, three, four, five. And then it says using what transition? Well, I know that I created that transition called move two. So because I went into the transition tab and checked these off, it's going to actually execute that transition. So then we do it again. So I got another one. So I'll go into two, switch to three. And I know that the countdown two has a three second animated countdown. So I'll make sure it says three seconds and I'll select move two for that as well. And then one more three goes to countdown end because I made a, a fourth one. And I believe that's going to be five seconds as well. Yep and we'll do the move transition. And that's the move to transition. And that's pretty much it. So, so if you hit close and I go into 1A, you'll see it actually switch down to two automatically. Why not? That's the question. Why did it not? And I'll tell you why it didn't. If I go to tools again and go into the advanced scene switcher, in the general tab, I have turned it off. So this, becomes extremely helpful when you're troubleshooting your individual scenes. You don't want the thing constantly switching out of one scene to the next while you're trying to troubleshoot a specific scene, right? So I didn't realize that I had turned it off. So now we're going back in and I'm going to click the start button. And now that red prompt goes away and it says active right here. And when I close and go back out of it and go back in, now it should switch to the next scene. Boom. So that's really, really helpful to know that if you're working on individual scenes and you don't want it to automatically switch out of it, you go into tools, advanced scene switcher and select stop. And then you'll get that red prompt. All right. Awesome. Now I'm willing to bet that you'll have a lot of interest in the next video that I'm going to show you. It involves more detail on the move transition plugin. This plugin is my absolute favorite because if you install it in OBS, it provides amazing power in controlling your sources. I'm talking moving it to the beat of music. I'm talking about all these wicked cool characteristics that you can set with your hotkeys. You gotta check this stuff out. You can click it right here. I'll see you over there. Best wishes to you. Stay strong and keep fighting.